Well, hello loves, and welcome back to Musi's Modern Dreadfuls. And today we are doing section two of Morphine Revelations by Funny B03. And away we go. All right, Abby, I know there's a stereo around here somewhere. Are you sure you want to just dive right into this? From what it sounded like, this could be about mom. I don't know if I'm ready for all that. First, Aunt M is dying. Now this? Sorry, this is just a lot right now. Sure enough, Aunt Mel has a CD player in her bedroom. With how excited my little brother was, I was surprised he didn't ask to play the CD in the car on the ride home. I guess it's understandable. He was a lot younger when she died and doesn't know anything of mom other than the stories he's been told. I sit on the edge of her bed and light a cigarette. Abs, are you fucking serious? We just got done visiting a woman who we love who is dying from cancer and you're gonna light the fuck up? What? She didn't have lung cancer, Keith. Don't give me that shit. I need this, okay? That settled, we turned the stereo on and placed the CD in the slot. Static greets us almost instantly. Hey kids, your mother was my sister and I love her very much. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't think about her. She always wanted to protect you. She didn't want you to grow up in fear. If you're hearing this now, it most likely means I'm gone. Or at least the parts that made me, well, me, are gone. Hopefully, if it's a life support situation, you went ahead and pulled that plug. <laughs> Aunt Mel let out one of her trademark and beautiful, youthful laughs that I hadn't heard from her in years before continuing on. You know, I don't want to go out like that. Anyway, when you both were little, your mother was renting a small, two-bedroom house. This was way back when you all lived way across the country, near the Pacific Coast. It wasn't anything special. It has a garage big enough for her to park her car in when she worked late. You two had to share a room. Your mother had her own room and everyone shared a bathroom. Abby, you remember that place, don't you? There was this little fence there that you'd always kick when you'd get mad. You'd do it every single time you got called in from playing outside or something. I kept telling her, one day you were gonna break your damn foot. That'd teach you, huh? <laughs> Keith, baby, you were probably much too young to have any memories there. A lot of your baby pictures were taken there, but, well, I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Anyway, as I was saying, you didn't live there for very long. Maybe eight months to a year at most? Things were fine when you first moved in. 
Considering the fact that your father had just left you all, it was your mom's first time ever living on her own. <sighs> Add being a single parent to the mix, and it was chaos on her. But I'll tell you what, she did the best she could. She loved you kids with all she had. Tears are formed in my eyes despite myself. Why couldn't our aunt have told us this when we needed to hear it? Why wait until now? It was about two months into the lease when I started getting these phone calls from her. She'd call in the early hours of the morning in hysterics thinking that your father was breaking into your house when she wasn't home. Things didn't end on good terms with your parents, as much as I hate to say it. Rona was very afraid of him, almost paranoid. Then, a couple of months after that, things started getting moved around. Her keys wouldn't be where she left them. Your toys would disappear from your room and reappear in hers. It just didn't make sense. I tried to tell her she was just distracted, daydreaming. She worked very hard to give you all a good life and all without a father. It was easily understandable for her to misplace things absent-mindedly. But eventually, things started going missing all together. Abby, you poor thing. You used to get in so much trouble for stealing food and snacks out of the kitchen. Every time you were asked about it, you would cry inconsolably always swearing that it wasn't you and that she was wrong. I know she felt bad for that in the end. <sighs> I remember finally agreeing to stay with you for a while to see things for myself. Your mom needed help and honestly, I missed my sister. I would have taken any opportunity at all to spend more time with her in my life. Well, we were catching up at the kitchen table, looking through old photo albums. The more we looked through, the more we realized that most of the pictures of you both were missing, especially yours, Keith. You gotta remember, this is back when, before everyone kept all their pictures on their phones. Pictures were printed out at photo labs, brought home, and saved. There were no backups. Once those pictures were gone, they were gone. We called the cops and made reports, but... Your father had alibis. He had an accountable life, interacted with a lot of people at his steady job, not to mention lived three states over at this point. Well, there wasn't really much they could do with no evidence and even less proof. Everything changed when Rona took an unexpected sick day from work. The schedule hadn't changed since they moved in. Rona always had weekends off and worked weekdays from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m., even holidays. Nobody was supposed to be there. <laughs> And 
with that, we end part two of Morphine Revelations by friend and author and fellow um, creator, Bunny B03. And we'll finish this up in one more episode. I might add, eh, I, we'll see. I'll be back soon. And in the meantime, yippee Kaye, Musi lovers, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to all my new subs. And just a warning in advance, a lot of my subs have been complaining that they are not getting notifications. If you notice this happening, because I tend to update at least two to three times a week, usually three times, but sometimes it'll be two. Um, in fact, I'm trying to increase. If that happens, the only thing we have noticed that works is occasionally leaving a comment and turning off the bell and then turning it on again under all notifications because I'm not going to make a video that's not a story time or a mini series or, you know, one of those. I don't know how soon you'll get that because my internet has been acting very, very bizarre. But um, in the meantime, take care of yourselves, stay healthy, fight for what's right. And if taking care of you right now is what's right, then you do that, babe. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye now.